Okay, folks, let's go ahead and begin creating the line part of the timeline. So insert shape. Can you guess? Can you guess? Line. That's right. Line works. Draw a line across our slide. And that's a good looking timeline right there. Next up is to create the markers. Now, a couple ways we could do that, right? We can certainly work from the built-in buttons. We can certainly work with uh, built-in shapes, but we can also work with uh, a regular text box, which is what we'll do here. So I'm just going to drop down some text and start with the date. Now, with the text here, there's a couple advantages, and I'll show you that once we get into uh, duplicating and modifying the objects. But for now, we're going to start with text. And let's go ahead and edit the states. So we click states and we jump into edit states. And what we want to do inside of the state for this text object is add the marker graphics. So I'll go back up here to the insert tab, add a simple uh, circle shape and draw that out over the line. So it looks pretty good. It's a little bit larger, but it makes it a little bit easier to see here in the screencast. I'd probably work with something a little bit smaller, but essentially that can be my starting marker. Come down here and let's duplicate the normal state and work with a built-in selected state. Selected state is going to be the state that shows uh, what, what's active, what's currently selected on our timeline. And I'm just going to reverse the colors here for this graphic. So my shape fill will be dark and then my outline will be light. So just something a little bit different or maybe I, maybe I actually want initial to be open and then when you're selected you're on that and you can go ahead and add the hover states visited states any of the other states that you want to add to your timeline but essentially that's what I'm going to work with right here click done okay so we really have our about 50 percent of it done right here we have our first text uh, label and marker let's go ahead and add the slide layer so we can actually display the content for this date in history. And we do that by coming down here to slide layers and clicking the new layer icon. And it's good, always a good idea to rename this and I'll just name these by the date. So 2010. And here's where you can get as creative as you like. And that means uh, however you want to design your caption. Now, you know, you can work with the shapes. You can actually work with the built in caption boxes, which is a really great idea. But, um, I think when I did mine, I was just kind of working with a little bit of uh, the built-in uh, shapes and then adding additional shapes below it, like a little rectangle, uh, just to give it a little bit more. Hey, what happened there? Right, something like that. And then I can remove the outline. So there's a blue one. And then so on, right? However you want to make these uh, look, it's up to you, right, for, for customizing them. I'm gonna jump back down to the base layer. And remember, right, this layer doesn't show unless I tell it to show, right? And so we use triggers for that. So this is really the third step. Now let's go ahead and select our first button, add a trigger. What do we wanna do? We wanna show a layer. And when do we wanna do it? When the user clicks text box. Okay, so that's really it. At this point, all we need to do is duplicate our timeline marker and our caption callouts for each of the markers. So I'm going to do one real quick just to show you how this works. So control click drag to duplicate. And remember how I said the text has its text boxes have its advantages. Well, if I want to change the date right here, look at that. I don't even have to dive into the actual object state to make that change. Really good way in production way for folks who maybe aren't as comfortable if you're sharing this possibly with your SMEs or other developers who aren't as comfortable in development, just another way to working. But if you think you're going to make a lot of changes to dates and, and text, not a bad way to work with by starting with the text and then putting the graphics inside of the text object. Okay, so now that I have that second marker, let's go ahead and just duplicate our 2010 slide layer. And we'll call that one 2012. And I didn't group those yet, so I'd probably want to group them, but I can just move them over with uh, the arrows. And, you know, depending on how you want to set this up, I think in the original uh, template, we kind of changed the colors for each of those, those labels, but uh, essentially that's what we're going to look at doing. And that's really all there is to building interactive timelines in Articulate Storyline. Work with some text, work with some button graphics, and then, of course, your call-out labels for each of your timeline markers.